now is a good time. But I'll, I usually cut it off anyway, so. Oh, good. All right. Well, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, if you give me a thumbs up that it's working, great. All right. Give me one second. I'll get my notes up. All right. Thanks, everybody, uh, for coming to the SF Doug. As you can see, I'm proudly wearing a shirt. I've been to Bad Camp uh, in 2018. So I dress for the occasion. Uh, unfortunately, I'm here tonight by myself. Uh, my peer colleague, uh, Kimana Bots, uh, couldn't make it. Um, she and I have discussed, given this talk many times, um, she is definitely my partner in this concept of live captioning and just making events accessible for everyone. Uh, I work with her for MidCamp, uh, making MidCamp accessible and um, she's just been great. Unfortunately, she just couldn't make it tonight. Again, I put the slides in the Zoom chat and we can uh, post those on the SF Doug meetup afterward. So I am Andrew Olson. I also go by Andy. Um, I work for Bounteous. Uh, you can find us uh, all across the country. Uh, I work here in the suburb of Chicago. We have offices around the country. Uh, we have a great Drupal team. Uh, we do a lot more than Drupal, so some uh, analytics and insights, uh, AEM, so a lot of other things. But uh, I work specifically on the Drupal team here and also with a focus on uh, accessibility. So fun fact about me, uh, normally this is a fun slide because Kimana and I introduce ourselves. So uh, I'll just continue with myself. The fun fact about me that Kimana likes to point out uh, after we've met uh, and worked together through the years is that uh, she was delighted that found out when my band played at Lollapalooza in 2008. And Lollapalooza is a, a festival here in the Chicago area. And it was a lot of fun that my band got to play and you can see my lovely musical instruments behind me. Uh, fun fact about Kimana that I always love to say is one, that she's super smart and super talented. I can't say enough about her. Uh, she is IAAP certified, which stands for International Association of Accessibility Professionals. And she is just a uh, real fun and a real joy if you've ever seen one of her talks. Uh, and thing I know about Kimana is a fun fact that I like is that she proudly ripped her wedding dress while playing laser tag at her wedding reception. So that says a lot about Kimana and myself. What we're here to talk about today though is live captioning. We're going to go over what is live captioning. We're going to talk about benefits of captioning beyond just the event. And we're also going to talk about next steps for the initiative uh, and the work that her and I are doing in trying to make events accessible. So first I want to talk about live captioning, just the concept. So you may not be familiar with it, but really what live captioning is, is just spoken words that are converted into text. And that text is then displayed for audiences or for whatever event, whatever conversation that you're having. So this allows you to speak freely and then the person that you're communicating with has the choice um, to read that text and follow along. There's a lot of tools out there. And uh, for example, Android has the uh, Live Transcribe, which is a great native um, app on an Android device. Um, and there's plenty of other sites that I'll cover uh, later. But today, what I want to talk about is live captioning the tool. And this is a tool that is used for in-person events. And how this tool works is Chrome, it's, it's fairly simple. Uh, Chrome supports the Web Speech API, and that is a mechanism for converting speech to text on a web page. Uh, you may have seen the, the Web Speech API if you've ever used Google Slides uh, and used their transcribing uh, uh, captioning within Google Slides. So it's using the exact same thing, the exact same Web Speech API. So it's using Google servers to perform the conversion and it sends that audio recording to Google. And I want to point out that the auto, audio data is not sent directly to the page itself. Uh, what it does is it goes to Google and then it sends back that text. Um, as it communicates with Google, uh, it also sends the domain of the website using the API, 
and your default browser language. And it uses the language settings of the website as well. Also note cookies are not sent along with these requests. When it comes back, our uh, tool that I'm gonna demonstrate shortly uh, captures the written text uh, in your browser. So you will see it uh, as you're talking, it goes out to the API, it comes back and you will see it in your browser. We also uh, capture it and then uh, transform it into an SRT format. So not just words, we use a format called SRT, uh, which stands for subrip subtitle file. And really that's just a fancy way of saying, um, and, and it's a format used by video playback programs, but it's a fancy way to say when I, when I, um, when the text comes back, it counts the number of sentences uh, and, and bits of information, and it also adds a time code to it. It has a start time code and an end time code. So SRT is a, a great format for when you put it with video because that allows you to say, oh, he sent the sentence at minute two, or she said this sentence at, you know, minute three or four. So it allows that conversation to be applied to video. What you can do is then take that speech to text in that SRT format and upload it as a caption to YouTube. I won't be covering that, but there's some great uh, resources and links I could send you to and happy to answer any questions about that. But that allows you to post that transcript to YouTube uh, and also what you can do is take this text out of this tool uh, and post it as a transcript on your website. I apologize. I'm going to pop up the chat window and try and have that open. And I'm going to do my best to answer those along the way if you really have questions. So uh, otherwise, I'll go through it at the end. Um, but I'm going to do my best to have all the screens open and be engaged in this presentation. Hey Andy, are you looking for some Q&A during your talk here? Sorry, that was a bad way of saying, yes, I can take some Q&A with uh, Zoom. Feel free, uh, I think um, Amy June said, you can unmute. That's a great way to get my attention. So if you do have a question, why don't you feel free to unmute and ask it and then put yourself back in. So my question is, are you live captioning this and can we see the link on our own machines? That is a great question. No, I am not live captioning. I'm gonna demonstrate the tool. Um, and the second part of that question is, there is no link to go and see the live captioning. That's one way that's uh, what's called cart. And I'll cover that in a bit. So. No, there's no link to go and see the live captioning happening for this presentation right now. Um, there is other tools that I'll cover. Does that help, Bob? Great. Yep. All right. Well, what I'm going to do now is uh, talk about how live captioning can help your event. And what you see on the screen right now is a diagram. And there's a lot of things on the diagram. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna walk you through this diagram and we're gonna talk about what is uh, uh, set up for an event like Bad Camp or any other camp that would be in person. So this again is for in-person events. So I'll walk you through the ideal setup and then we'll go into the tool. So I'm gonna use my fancy pointer here. First and foremost is uh, the presenter. And it's ideal to have a microphone that's really near that presenter so they can, um, you can capture a clear and clean uh, audio signal. The next part of this diagram is a computer. So this is a computer that is dedicated to live captioning. As you'll see, the microphone is plugged directly into that. And it's a strong audio source going into a live captioning computer that is connected to the internet and it's visiting the site that we're gonna visit here shortly. Out of that computer, we're gonna go all the way up to here to a monitor that is dedicated to live captioning and displaying the text for the room. So as you'll notice, it is not on the screen that's presenting, right? This is a dedicated monitor that just shows the text and you put it close to the presentation 
so people that need it can um, look quickly from the, uh, the, the monitor to the screen that's presenting, but it's not directly on the presentation slides. Next uh, is D. So this is a reserved section of the audience. So what you wanna do is make sure that uh, people that um, uh, utilize this tool and need this tool have a great line of sight for this monitor. Again, it's just kind of self-service. What we've done at MidCamp is we just put reserved uh, seats in the front row that has a good line of sight. So it just gives uh, the people that need it the, a, a good, good look at it. Next is a very important person. It is the volunteer. So when we, we put on great events like MidCamp or Bad Camp, you know, we have this wonderful group of people that are dedicated to making the presenter feel really good and safe and the people in the room feel like they're getting the best experience. This would be an additional person and their job is to make sure that this computer is working. It's uh, connected to the internet. You know, you have, um, you, it's, it's capturing the speech to text from the presenter and it's capturing and displaying on the monitor. Next up, Again, this is just pointing out that there's a computer for the presentation. This is not the computer that's live captioning. The presenter is just free to have their own computer, their own presentation slides. Uh, again, that's gonna be posted over here on the screen for presentation. So uh, the speech to text is not gonna be impeding any slides that this presenter may have put together. Finally is H, which is room audio. So anybody that puts on an event that wants to make it accessible for people, uh, you really, to have a great setup is to have a speaker in the room and that way everybody can hear and um, hear the speaker clearly and um, also pray a microphone to answer questions so everybody can have the benefit of having a good experience in the room. Next up, so, I'll just pause here. Any questions about kind of this diagram in a, a ideal kind of larger room setup for live captioning? Hi, Andrew, I've got a question. Sorry, I might, I might have missed it. Um, oh, what if there's uh, sound in the presentation, like sound coming from the computer? How do you, how do you capture that? Great question. Uh, quick answer is you don't because it's going to be through the microphone of the presenter so there is no additional audio input. You could probably do a splitter about here, um, and that could be part of the input, but let's talk a little bit about what that sound would entail. If it is um, sound in a video, first off, the video I hope would be captioned by the speaker to, to make it truly accessible. So then there is really no need to have that also on the screen. Uh, the second one, if it is sounds, uh, live captioning doesn't really handle sounds or music, so it would just be like music playing. Uh, does that kind of answer the question? Yeah, I was thinking more about, um, you know, if the sound was was speech, right? Or, I mean, take the meta example of somebody doing a presentation about uh, accessibility issues and, and having, you know, JAWS read out something. Yeah, so I've seen great uh, presentations like that with Carrie Fisher does a great job presenting those and those videos she typically has are already captioned on this presenter screen. So the point there is that the person would be able to get the, the video while watching it. So there's no, not really a reason for it. It does cause a problem with the transcription later because we wouldn't capture it for like a full transcription of the entire presentation. But it's actually, is there any other questions? Because that's a good transition for actually how the tool works and how you actually could add that later. Is there any other great question? Any other questions? All right. Well, again, don't hesitate to interrupt me. This is the, the scary part for me. This is live demo. Um, what I'm going to do is bring up my browser and I'm going to the website, uh, lc.midcamp.org. Again, the people at MidCamp, the volunteers there have graciously hosted this uh, on MidCamp and allowed us to use it. So anybody can go to this, you can go to this now. 
um, and test it out for yourself. So what I'm gonna do is just walk you through kind of start to finish um, a live transcription session. So first off, what you'll see here is uh, how to use. So this is just an accordion that kind of reiterates some of the things that I've already uh, brought in the presentation is that there's a Chrome desktop browser requirement, which at this point shouldn't be too much of a concern. Um, and this just kind of gives you an overview of what we're going to do is next we're going to click the button, click the caption. It's going to start captioning. Uh, it, the browser is going to ask us to use the microphone. Uh, we're going to start talking. We're going to start captioning. Um, and we may need to pause occasionally. And then we'll click the text and we're going to come back to the screen and interface and we'll see what happens. So with that, let's do it. Let's click the little to caption, right? What you'll see here is right away, it's going to ask you, hey, are you sure you want to use your microphone? This website wants to use it. What this is doing is it's allowing the microphone on the browser to send that to that Google API. So I'll say yes. And I'm going to start speaking. I'm going to try and enunciate. So it picks it up and has limited corrections. Hello and welcome to the presentation about how to make your next event accessible. This demo is to show you how the live captioning tool works. Click on the text to return to the home interface. What I'm finding is that when I know I'm, I have the text coming on the screen, even though I know I'm being recorded, I talk a lot clearer because I want it to come through. Anyway, let's go back to this. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I want to view the selected session transcript. If you noticed before, there was in the session, but now that I went in and clicked it, there's now session one. So when I click on this button, what we've done in this tool is just defaulted it, defaulted to that SRT format. Again, there's three different text breaks that I did here. Uh, and it has the time code. And what I could do is if this was video recorded, I could copy this and put this with YouTube and it would match up exactly my mouth moving and those words happening with uh, text on the screen as captions within YouTube. The, so this is that SRT button. There's also the text. So I could just take this text and um, just copy it out of here. The cool thing about this, uh, I worked with a great developer, a colleague of mine here at Bounteous, his name's Glenn Pichars. Uh, Glenn was able to take this tool uh, and this text is being stored in the browser itself. So it's local storage of the browser. It's not being captured by midcamp.org. There's no sign in. There's no data at all being captured by this website at all. It's all being captured in your local browser. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to continue this session. So if I click continue the session, I'm going to go right back to that other interface. So if I click that button to, to, to continue, I can talk a little bit about something and I'm hesitating a bit. So errors are probably going to pop in, but I know a good way to, to create an error. And that is unfortunately to mention my colleague and friend, Kimana Bots. I'm gonna go ahead and click text again. And what you'll see is if you were paying attention to my slides, Kimana's name is spelled with a Q and a Y. It's spelled Kamana. So it got close, but it's not perfect. What I'm gonna do now is, uh, so I could continue this all day, so stop and start and go into it. One way, and I have a colleague at Bounteous that uses this, she was using it to transcribe notes. She found it better and easier to read it into this tool than to sit and type it. So she enunciated it, was able to copy this out and uh, use it herself when she was typing up notes after some event. So different usages for this, not just for live events. But what I'm gonna do now is um, I'm going to hit refresh to get another button here. And so I have this button that says start new session recording. Again, this other session is here, but if I start the new session, this is going to start a brand new session recording. So 
for example, if this was at Bad Camp and there was the first room session, this would be capturing the second session. I'm going to click on the text and go out. And there we go. So we can click on this and view this selected session. Whoops. View selected session. And uh, we can look at that. We can go back to session one and see that. So it's capturing these separate sessions that we can then use. Let me go. Um, is there any questions about this so far? I'll go ahead and pause since we're that seems to be working. Any direct questions before I move back into the presentation to talk a bit more? Does this work at all well for uh, online events or does the audio get even more garbled? Great question. So in regards to online events, this is picking up the, the microphone for my computer. So unfortunately you might hear my cat meowing in the background because she's excited that my son got home uh, from being with his friends. So. Yes, if you had a dedicated room that had that microphone, it would get it. It has picked it up and I have recorded meetings with it. Uh, but if I say something or somebody comes up behind me, it unfortunately also picks that up. It's not a direct input. Or could you have like a, some sort of virtual microphone on your computer that would kind of pick up whatever sounds coming through, through the uh, sound card? Yeah, so that's one of the things that uh, great question. I don't know how to do that, but that is something that I would love to figure out and work on and get as part of this tool. Because the way we have it now is we have that prompt to say, can I use your microphone? And then that's how it sends it. There's got to be a way that we can talk to that Google API through another audio input on your computer that you choose. So if somebody's good at that and interested, I would love to talk to you and figure out how to do it. But yes, this is a long way of saying this is not for online events. Unfortunately, it's just for a microphone. This was specifically done for mid-camp and to capture at mid-camp sessions. Uh, any other questions before I move on? Cool. So we talked about and you saw what it is. It's a great tool that if you're at an event and you have a computer with a microphone, it does a pretty good job with speech to text. I wasn't paying terribly close attention to how well it was uh, capturing and accuracy, but let's talk a little bit about what live captioning is not. It is not CART, which stands for Communication Access Real-Time Translation. So this is also known as open captioning or real-time stenography uh, or real-time captioning. So we were lucky with MidCamp earlier this year. When we did it, we had uh, a real-time stenographer and we used a, a company called ACS. So as you saw, this is just a API, a Google API doing it for us. It's not a real human doing this. And those people are great. So. What I want to say is that this tool is, and our goal with this site, is not to replace CART or interpreters. CART and interpreters are amazing. They're amazing skills, and it's the best way to capture an event. However, they can be cost prohibitive. So, uh, for example, the Chicago accessibility meetups, we're lucky to have McDonald's sponsor. So every time there's a Chicago accessible meetup, McDonald's pays for uh, CART uh, interpreters uh, sorry, CART uh, transcripts during the event. And that's the case, kind of the question back to Bob is, there's a link that's set up while the event's going on, that live transcript. So that real person, that real human typing as a conversation is happening um, is, is available in that link. However, the Chicago, these are 2018 prices. I was able to talk to the Chicago um, accessibility people about pricing, and that was uh, 150 per hour. So imagine that that's just for one event. Now imagine at MidCamp where we have five rooms with eight sessions a day for two to three days. So that's where it can be cost prohibitive. Um, remote cart can be 125 to 130 per hour. And again, that was really great for MidCamp. So we had, I think, five different rooms 
and it was just a per hour rate. Some more rates, uh, and again, more great ways to make your uh, events accessible, and these are preferred, is to have uh, American Sign Language interpreter. So whenever somebody signs up for MidCamp or your event, it's always great to ask, do you have any um, additional needs so we can make this event uh, great for you? Um, if, if they do need an ASL interpreter, um, so it would be uh, 80 per hour, and deafblind interpreters can be about $90 per hour per person. So live captioning, I just wanna reiterate whether it's CART, whether it's uh, the tool and the site that you're on right now, um, it's, it's for everyone. It's not just for hearing loss and deafness. It's for people that their first language is different, um, possibly from the language that's being spoken. You know, we're in a virtual world and virtual events, uh, maybe you can attend, but live captioning might help you if it's a secondary language, uh, understand it better. And also people that comprehend the written word better. So it might have cognitive abilities uh, that they need and they just uh, understand written word better. So these are the supporting links and this is what Kimana and I have been up to is uh, lc.midcamp.org, you know, either doing it now, multitasking or afterward feel free to visit, you know, go to that site, use it at your next event. It's, um, it's there to be used. We don't capture any information. Just know that information is being sent to Google that brings the words back, but everything's in your browser. Um, one quick note, if you do use um, incognito and you close that browser, it's gone with, because you said you wanted incognito and you wanted it destroyed. So that is a minor note that incognito does get rid of it in Chrome. So lc.midcamp.org, the slides are there. You can click on these. Uh, livecaptioning.com, again, um, great people at MidCamp. We bought this URL. The goal here for that website is to have some blog posts and just have some more discussions about live captioning, what it is and how to make things and how to make events better. We have a project on GitHub. If you're really geeky about this and want to know how it works, it's, it's open source. So just go there, you can download it. If you have an idea for how to make it better, I'd love to hear about it. And I'd love a pull request. And I'd love to talk to you more about it. We're also on Open Collective. Um, so we have Open Collective, but we aren't really taking money now. We're trying to figure out what we would do with it, other than what we've been able to do for MidCamp and, and events. But it's there for someday when, when we need it. I do want to say, and you've probably have seen it while, while I've been talking here, is live captioning is not perfect. There's definitely going to be inaccuracies with speech to text. Uh, there's another issue with, um, there's a reliance on needing internet access and that can be a struggle. Uh, I know people that go to any events, Drupal camps, you know, having solid internet is always tr trouble. So if you're in a room or a session room um, and it, the connection is not good, it can time out and you may need to refresh it. The second part of that is if there's uh, not a good audio signal, so you can't hear that person strong, the connection can drop off and you may need to refresh it. Another issue uh, and um, something that we would love some help with is that as you talk, you know, the text can extend off the page if you have a super fast talker uh, that's not taking pauses to create those natural breaks. Uh, another thing that would be great is the ability to change the size of the text. You know, this might be good for the monitor we're on now, but let's imagine that the room is uh, super large uh, at Bad Camp. You know, one of those rooms vary in sizes. It'd be great to be able to change the size of the text. Uh, I have a good idea of how to do that. Uh, I would love some help to implement that. The last is browser remembering your microphone settings. If you download this, Again, you can just have this as just HTML on your laptop and use it as long as you have internet access. The reason we have lc.midcamp.org is to kind of get around remembering the microphone settings. If you do just have it yourself or you're not using HTTPS, 
Chrome is very suspicious that you want to keep using your microphone, which is a good thing, but it can be annoying if you're just trying to use this tool um, to keep every time you want to transcribe, uh, capture somebody, you have to click allow microphone. And last, I just want to say, uh, even though live captioning is not perfect, human error does happen. You know, we're in a, Drupal is very tech heavy and there's tech terms and industry terms that can always be misinterpreted by the human captioners. A great thing about MidCamp and those captioners is they ask for slides up ahead. Um, so that way the, the captioner could get familiar with possibly some terms um, and also to get the spelling right of the person that they're captioning. So CART interpreters are really great and amazing people and they work really hard at what they do, but errors can occur. So why would you choose live captioning? Hopefully I've convinced you that it's free. Another great thing is that uh, it's integrated with the Drupal recording initiative. Kevin is a great, uh, Great person that's at MidCamp. Uh, he's also been at the Fox Valley and we actually, uh, at one of the Fox Valley meetups, he and I brought all the equipment and got it working. So if you are using the Drupal recording initiative for your event, uh, this is a great free um, add-on that you can add. It lowers the barriers for attendees. You know, we wanna make events as accessible as possible for people of all abilities. Another great benefit is transcriptions, uh, tr sorry, the transcripts can be used as the subtitles for your YouTube videos. And lastly, that transcript can be posted on your website. So what I wanna let you know is that after MidCamp, we captured uh, 2019 and this year's 2020, and we posted those transcripts on the session abstracts. And after adding those, we observed a 14% increase in daily average organic sessions. So that is a huge benefit for very little effort. We already had the transcripts. We just added them to our page and we got this great benefit. And more people are now seeing our page and all those wonderful words uh, about that subject matter are now added to that page. So not only are we helping the usability of the site, which means somebody could come to that session and quickly scan through the transcript and see if it's something that they wanna invest in watching. But we're also just increasing traffic that would not have found our content otherwise. This was uh, something really exciting. Uh, Kimana and I were tagged um, in a tweet and the live captioning tool was used by somebody at a conference in Copenhagen, Denmark. Uh, this past February. So we had no idea we've had the site up, uh, but this person, as you can see in the picture, used it at some event in Denmark. Um, you can see it up on the screen there. So that's really exciting that live captioning is happening. It's out there. Um, and she provided some interesting feedback. So what do you need to make, uh, to bring live captioning to your event? So I've tried to break this down as, as possible. So first and foremost, you need a computer that has Chrome version 25 plus. That computer needs to have internet access. Ideally, you're gonna want that external monitor so all the people in the room can have it. Um, you're gonna want a good microphone for the presenter so there is that strong signal and you don't have those issues. So it's capturing all the, the text sorry, all the speech that that person to write into text. And lastly, you just need volunteers to make this happen because if you're putting on an event, uh, it's a lot to happen. You definitely don't want, maybe what you've seen is something that's passionate about myself is it's already hard enough to speak at an event. And if you just give somebody like, oh, you have to hit this button. Oh, you just click this thing here. You know, you want that person to feel like they're just presenting and don't have to be encumbered by anything. And so we as volunteers use these tools and just make this event uh, for everybody and, and help everybody out. I could not have done this without all the people on the slide. And I'll, I'll briefly go through uh, 
uh, the people here. So first and foremost, MidCamp for the uh, for hosting and just the push of all the great people that are involved with MidCamp to make this thing and just keep putting wind in, in my sales and Kimana's sales to keep it moving. Fatima, who was the keynote in 2019, said, hey, I really think we should caption my keynote. I'd really like to do that. When she brought that to MidCamp with Kimana and I on the accessibility team, that led us to a code pen by Dave Rupert. And from that code pen, we scratched our heads and said, we can do this. We can make this a little bit better. Because we were able to caption and we had that code pen, we felt like, hey, we can actually make this happen at a Drupal event. And that is where Burton Kent came in. He was hesitant to come to MidCamp because uh, he, um, is, uh, has uh, hearing issues and didn't feel like he could contribute to conversations and had a tough time following along. He was able to come to this event, had the laptop in his, his lap and had, we had a microphone and he was able to go to sessions and hear the speaker. He would put the microphone up by them and really was our first boots on the ground test of this. And he gave us amazing feedback and had direct benefit at MidCamp, so we could not have done it without him. And it felt really good to, to have an idea for a tool and have it actually used and, and um, get that kind of feedback. Glenn, who I've already mentioned, is the super smart person that figured out that this text does not just have to go to the wind after it um, falls off the page. You know, he was able to take that, capture it into browser storage and then also convert it to that SRT format. So he's just a great developer. Kevin, who again, just helps put wind in the sails, uh, who was like, hey, I think we can make this part of the Drupal recording initiative. I already have all this equipment and good microphones. So Kevin's just been great. Mike Gifford, who uh, is the uh, accessibility uh, person for, for Drupal, bumped into him at a DrupalCon, and he's another person that's like, you should just keep going with this. This is a really good idea. JD Flynn, another great developer in the Chicago area. He has some really great ideas about how this could be captured in a room, and maybe it's kind of uh, like a live app that you could just have it on your phone. So no longer needing a monitor up at, up at the screen is that somebody could just type in a code and then have it on their phone and device. And then they could walk out of the room and it would be captured so you could have that transcript on that device. Lastly, Bounteous, my employer, and they give, they, they allow me time to like fuel this passion. Uh, same with Nerdery, you know, they allow uh, Kimana and I to, to collaborate and work on this and present at great events like this. Finally, I want to thank uh, the Drupal Association. So unfortunately, uh, DrupalCon Minneapolis didn't happen this year for uh, reasons as we all know due to the pandemic. But before that got canceled, we were working with them and Carliana Copra, and we were actually at the event for DrupalCon was going to have one room with live captioning. So we were going to present on it and we did present at DrupalCon. Um, but we were going to have live captioning in that room for both of those days and they committed to it and uh, it was all set to happen and then unfortunately we all went virtual but my point here is not just the the disappointment of being able to test it uh, with a bunch of Drupalists the point here is that DrupalCon a very large global event committed to doing this um, so I want to say that this is definitely something that uh, you can have at your meetup or your conference for in-person. They saw the value for it, uh, and uh, it was really good to have their commitment and support. So what are some next steps? We, uh, as always, if, if you know of um, captioning tools, I have friends that are constantly, if they hear about something, have you heard this, have you read this, we're always evaluating. So there's other things out there. Otter.ai is a great um, virtual uh, live captioner that can integrate with Zoom. Uh, Thiston was another um, interesting speech to text technology. There's another one called webcaptioner.com. Uh, 
and as I already mentioned, live transcribe on Android. So there's a lot of really great captioning tools out there. As inaccurate as they are, I think they're just going to get better and better, and it's exciting to see other solutions out there. As I've said, um, I love this kind of competition. I'm never disappointed that there's a better solution. That just means that somebody else has made speech to text that much better. And I'd love it if our website was obsolete and there was a really great tool. Um, all that said is I, I still think that our concept of how to make events uh, accessible uh, still resonates well. So to me, it doesn't really matter the tool as much as the concept. Uh, next steps, uh, live captioning versus real-time captioning. So at a Chicago accessibility meetup, I had the opportunity to put this live captioning tool against a CART interpreter. And I have both of those transcripts uh, sitting on my hard drive. And I'm hoping to make a really interesting uh, blog post article about it, talking about the AI, you know, Google speech to text versus a real person captioning. So it's uh, really interesting and I'm excited to get that post out one of these days. Um, transcripts added to Drupal TV. Uh, I opened uh, is something in the issue queue um, about it. So this links directly to that. I don't know who, if hopefully there's Drupal TV people here now, um, but I made a issue for it. It should be very simple to add transcripts to Drupal TV, whether it's using this tool or another tool, but Again, very passionate about the value that that could add to, to Drupal, Drupal sessions. I'd love if our tool, we could figure out uh, like what was said earlier, a direct input. So this could be integrated with Zoom. Uh, that would be amazing. So it's not always picking up the microphone. View on your own device versus in-room monitors. Again, I talked about JD Flynn, his ideas for that. It's pretty exciting and interesting. And lastly, web VTT format. That's more of a standard format out there on the web. Um, there's more information about that. Hopefully we could get a easy conversion to add another button to our interface. That would be a good way to have yet another format used for this. This is myself and Kimana. Uh, we are at the end here. Um, this is how you find us. You know, we're on Drupal. Uh, I'm Andrew Ozone. Kimana is Kimana B. Uh, we're on the Twitters. We love, you can tell, very passionate about this. Uh, I wish Kimana was here so you could see her fire in her eye about this. You know, we're, we really like uh, what we've done so far and there's plenty more to do. So here's the tool, here's the website, you know, um, we'd love to hear from you. And now, I'll take any additional questions. I have one. I might have missed it. Um, the SRT format that you talked about, that the transcripts come in, are those time stamped? Correct. Could you, if, if, if there was like a really bad captioning on YouTube, you could insert these into the YouTube field for the SRT or for the for the timestamp format and it would replace the captioning? Correct. Okay. Captioning, absolutely. Um, the other thing to do is that um, you can correct it as you go. So it would be up to you if this, this format was better than what YouTube gave you. But that same interface, the reason I'm hesitant for it is that same interface, you can correct it there too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, but if it means, because mm, I have to transcribe or I have to correct captionings on the Ally Talks videos and it takes hours. So sometimes the quick fix to get it up online quicker is another transcript that's better, you know, that kind of thing. I totally get it. Yes, this okay. is a way to do that. Okay. For sure. Um, there's also, I had the opportunity to join uh, another talk and it's worth bringing up here. Her name is Meryl, and she, this link that I'll put in the chat, and I'll bring up on my screen shortly. She is uh, Meryl Evans. She's really good. She has a complete guide to caption videos. She 
uh, I, w- I joined um, a talk she gave and she went through her workflow about how she does videos and how she captions them and how she uploads and does it all in YouTube. So this is a great resource. You might want to check it out about that like workflow and how to correct it and pro tips. But she is uh, quite the resource and really fun, great speaker. So if you have a chance to see her speak, uh, do it. She's great. And her videos are amazing. She started the Craptions, the hashtag Craptions. Uh, I believe she started it, but she she uses it all the time. And she also uh, is a proud supporter of hashtag Captions. So whenever she sees a video, um, she uses hashtag Captions out there. So, so people know that this video has captions. Any other questions. Uh, question is, it's probably not using the same engine as YouTube. I don't know if it's the same uh, API. That's a great question that I could probably figure out uh, with a little bit of research. So I don't know. And yes, SRT is YouTube's format. Uh, WebVTT is more of a stand industry standard uh, for videos. Um, so, yeah. Thank you. Um, round of oh. applause. Oh, do you have a question, Bob? I do, I do, but if we're gonna do a round of applause, everybody's gotta unmute themselves, right? So maybe we should do that. But anyway, <laughs> Andy, this is like the third or fourth time I've seen you present on this, because you were nice enough to come and present to our Fox Valley Computing Professionals out in the Western suburbs of Chicago, and also to Fox Valley Drupal a couple times. And, um, this, you know, I, I had a little bit of time to think about this more before I got on. So I did a few, I did a few things in kind of prep and uh, I think we should talk a little bit about how to import, how to kind of employ this in making virtual events or live events when we get to do that in real life again. Still virtual so people can participate remotely as well. And this is a cool tool for that. I really like to embed it. And uh, we'll see where that goes, but. That's Excellent. great, uh, yeah. I agree we're in a world of blend, right? Cause uh, okay. I saw some people that I know are East Coast on this West Coast meetup, you know, to have that crossover um, is really, really good. So it's great to see people in person, great conversations can happen, but more people can join. So this could be, this, this would be interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I have some questions about contributing to the project. Um, you have an issue queue on Drupal.org or just GitHub? I don't, I have it on GitHub. I've made issues on Drupal for, for Midcamp. Um, so, I have made it because uh, it was mid-camp transcriptions, but no, I don't have a uh, Drupal. I call this a Drupal adjacent project, uh, but it can benefit events. Is that, am I answering your question? So I'll, yeah. pretty much I work the issue queue in GitHub and I need to get more active in that. So but. I guess my question is because I organize uh, contribution days at various camps, like how open are you and Kamana to leading those initiatives at the different camps now that they're virtual? I would love to. And you have enough issues for like a group to work on all day and. I do. We have our, yeah, just some initial ideas. So we have um, one, this website that is uh, very bare bones, but it's Jekyll. So if somebody wants to help with the website, that's great. Um, I have a bunch of writing, so it's not just technical. So there's articles, as I said, there's, um, better ways to describe this tool. There's uh, analysis of, of stuff. So 
yeah, I have uh, plenty of ideas and, and other ideas <laughs> that, um, that may be technical. I'm wide open. So I would love to. That's a great idea to, I think I'm in the Slack for events. So it might be good outreach for Kamana and myself to, to reach out on those contrib days. And it'd be very easy to just make those uh, contrib uh, credits out there. Great tool and a great presentation. Hey, thanks. Yay. <laughs> Very cool. I've given this a few times. I will say this was not as fun. Not because of you people, it's just because Kim is great to present with. So uh, you know, you take what you get. Yeah. I'm going to stop the recording now. <laughs> <laughs>